Good morning to you, Brett. In just the last few minutes, we heard the sound of a couple of more flashbang grenades as police in Hamburg still clearly dealing with the protesters who have taken to the streets here. For many, many years, we have seen these economic summits attract the attention of protesters and people who are just bent on making mischief or causing trouble. But it's been a number of years since we saw what gripped the streets of Hamburg, Germany today. Police in riot gear fought running skirmishes with violent groups in Hamburg today, firing tear gas and water cannons to disperse the crowd. At one point, part of a building appeared to be set on fire, clouds of thick smoke billowing into the sky. Police expect a core group of about five to 8,000 people to cause trouble during the summit, but those who came here to legitimately demonstrate, and they may number close to 100,000, have been noisy, but for the most part, peaceful. Far from the protests, which will likely have no impact on the G20 leaders, President Trump met with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The atmosphere appeared cordial enough, though just last week, Merkel appeared very critical of the president's intention to pull out of the Paris Climate Accord. We cannot and will not wait to act until the science has convinced every last doubter. In one word, the Paris Climate Agreement is irreversible and cannot be renegotiated. Earlier today, in Poland, President Trump was on friendly territory, a speech in Warsaw's Krasinski Square, where he answered critics who questioned his commitment to NATO's doctrine of mutual defense, Article 5. We stand firmly behind Article 5. Words are easy, but actions are what matters. In the speech, the president also had stern words for Russian President Vladimir Putin, with whom he'll meet tomorrow. We urge Russia to cease its destabilizing activities in Ukraine, and elsewhere, and its support for hostile regimes, including Syria and Iran, and to instead join the community of responsible nations in our fight against common enemies and in defense of civilization itself. But earlier, in a press conference with Polish President Andrzej Duda, President Trump appeared to soft-pedal U.S. intelligence assessments that Russia was meddling in the U.S. election. I think it was Russia, and I think it could have been other people in other countries. Uh, could have been a lot of people interfered. The statement brought a sharp response from the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Adam Schiff, who accused the president of capitulating to Putin. In a sharply worded statement saying, quote, this is not putting America first, but continuing to propagate his own personal fiction at the country's expense. The president also addressed in person for the first time North Korea's 4th of July test of an intercontinental ballistic missile. The president warning that he has been considering, quote, some severe things to respond to the North's provocations. It's a shame that they're behaving this way, but they are behaving in a very, very dangerous manner and something will have to be done about it. North Korea's test of that intercontinental ballistic missile will put an extra emphasis on another meeting that the president is having here at the G20 summit with Chinese President Xi Jinping. In a tweet that he sent out just before leaving the United States, President Trump appeared to give up on the idea that China would help rein in Pyongyang. But when asked tonight if he had given up on President Xi, President Trump said, never give up. Brett? John Roberts traveling with the president just after midnight in Hamburg. John, thank you.